G'day guys, Luke here from Fizzfuel and we're a craft tea brewery here on the Gold Coast, Australia. Today's video is about how we uh, created our four flavours. We ended up whittling them down to two after local market uh, tests um, and how we then tested them with friends and family to refine them further for our first commercial release. So our first four flavours were berry juice to sane. That's sane is just a herbal based tea, so no caffeine. Uh, the second was an Earl Grey ginger pineapple, and the third was a matcha based green tea. The fourth being a bit more experimental and something that we want to be, you know, have a bit of uh, fun with, which was a banana bread based tea uh, mixed in with some Daintree black tea. After testing at some uh, local markets here on the Gold Coast, we come to find that the two teas that got the most attention were uh, the berry juice to same and the Earl Grey ginger pineapple. A uh, broad range of people uh, loved these teas. Um, not saying the other two were bad, it just the uh, green tea a lot of people were a bit hesitant to try. So it's something we want to explore uh, in the future. And the, the fourth one, banana bread, was a funny one. People sat on the fence with it. They either loved it or they hated it. Um, but it was just an expression of what we want to do here at Fizzfield and, you know, just test people's perceptions on what is a good flavour. So it's, yeah, that's something that we, uh, people want to be looking forward to with our teas is to really look for some fun and funky flavours. We've got some in the pipeline that are going to be really cool coming out in the next year. So to establish our baseline for our teas, we used our blend in uh, a formulation of 10 grams per litre up to 50 grams per litre. Um, and then figured out from there, okay, what's, what's going to be our baseline, so many grams per litre. So to do that, I uh, got some Coke bottles, about five actually, actually um, and replaced their caps with carbonation lids. Uh, you can get these from uh, Kegland, I'll put a link in the description. And so from here, we chilled them down and then applied the uh, gas disconnect and then sh shook them up just to kind of force carbonate as if you would with a soda stream. Um, and from there, bought them out and then met friends and family, sort of went, okay, what is it that's the good here, what's too much, what's too little, and that's how we settled. So from our market testing, uh, we found that people wanted a slightly sweeter product. And this is the sort of the broader spectrum of people. Not uh, all people want it to be sweeter, some people want it way too sweet. Um, so for our, what we want for our first commercial release was for it to find that, that, that middle ground. Uh, so we trialled uh, products such as Ethereum, uh, Xylitol, and then also a stevial glycide base, so just a stevia based uh, with natural flavourings. Um, and so what we sort of set it on in the end was the vital, the vital zing uh, water drops. These are actually quite tasty and you don't need much to kind of get that flavour. So a couple more items that we needed to add in to take our, our beverage to the next level, uh, commercially that is. As we also needed to add into the Earl Grey ginger pineapple some citric acid to drop the pH level down to below 3.2. Uh, this stops uh, yeast growth uh, from occurring inside of the drink. Also, we had to add in some potassium sorbate. Potassium sorbate is also another yeast uh, inhibitor, so it just stops the growth of yeast in the can, uh, fermenting it, and also over uh, carbonating the both potassium sorbate and citric acid are actually, if you look on the back of most of your beverage cans, uh, you'll see that they've got one or the other or both. 